What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video of the day in the garage with the 340. Today, as promised, we're going to be flashing in MHD. As you guys know, the car is currently running boot mode, but some of you have asked to show me what it's like flashing with MHD and what that tune is like and how much different it is from boot mode. Honestly, they are both pretty similar. So I've ran both of these tunes on most of my cars. Um, the Supra had both MHD and boot mode at one point. Personally, I preferred MHD on the Supra. I didn't really think the OTS maps from Pro Tuning Freaks for the Supra were quite where they needed to be. And that was originally why I switched over to MHD. For me personally, I also liked the interface of MHD a little bit better than boot mode, but really this is gonna come down to user preference and what you guys like the most. Another difference between the two is that boot mode runs off of the cloud, whereas MHD, you actually download physical files for your tunes. I'm a little bit old school. I actually like having the physical file. I actually just make like an iDrive file on my Google Drive and I store all of my physical tune files in that folder. So no matter where I am or what I'm doing, I can always access the folder. When you are running off of a cloud, if you do not have service like cell service or the cloud goes down, you cannot access your maps. When you have physical files, it doesn't matter where you are or what you are doing, you can always access your maps. So for me personally, that is why I gravitate towards MHD. MHD is also known to be a little bit more aggressive in their OTS maps. That might not be for everyone, that might be for some people, but the majority of tuners out there will tune off of either boot mode or MHD. We're gonna go ahead and use the actual MHD adapter today. If you guys are interested in buying MHD, you can do so at the link below. I purchase all of my licenses and my Bluetooth dongle from CES Motorsport. They have all of the MHD packages that you would need. So if you're interested, click that link below, go ahead and buy it. Let's go ahead and hop in the car. I'm gonna show you how it works when you're flashing in the map and then we will run out and do a little bit of driving. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and take our adapter and put it down into the OBD2 port. It is in the footwell by your left foot right under here. Next step is to put the car into accessory mode, foot off the brake, double tap start stop. For all of you super owners, you're gonna have to hit that three times. All right, so first thing is first, make sure that your battery is healthy. If it is not, um, throw it on a battery charger while you're doing this. We're gonna go ahead and put our seatbelt on so the car remains on. Go to your Wi-Fi. Once you've connected the adapter, you're gonna see MHD, your Wi-Fi adapter in there, select that. I like to put the uh, phone into airplane mode and then of course get all of your licenses set up in MHD download the app do all of that You're gonna see a few things in here So you're gonna see flash and MHD map um, and then also flash a custom map That is something that you can do if you obviously have some sort of custom map But today we're just focusing on flash and MHD map if you are not sure if your DME is tunable You can do the unlock check and they'll tell you in there if you need to get like a bench unlock or something done You'll see under stock here. You can uh, flash back to stocks flash the car back to stock stock. You can do flash state zero with stock power. And then you also see monitor where you can do like your data loggings and your graphs and then codes. You can read your DME codes and clear them. But let's go back to tune. So today we're simply going to be flashing in a stage two tune from the OTS MHD maps, flash and MHD map. So you're going to see in here, you're going to have a few different ones, uh, stage zero, stage zero plus OEM style maps, stage one, stage two, and then stage two high pressure fuel pump. So if I had like my Dorch installed or something, I would go in there and do that. But we are gonna be doing stage two with the upgraded downpipes and we're gonna be doing 93 octane. So go ahead and select that here. Then you're gonna see a couple of options for the transmission, manual MT or XHP flashed AT or auto AT. For me, I am on XHP, so I'm gonna be selecting the XHP flashed AT. If you click on the little arrow on the top right, it's going to bring up the actual uh, map here and we're going to go into options and verbal settings. You'll see exhaust setup. You have a couple of options, aftermarket or stock downpipes. I have aftermarket, so I'll select that. We'll remove the limiter. When it comes to the burbles, you just select that little slider there and then it brings it all out here. I'm going to actually go to soft and then I'm going to be turning these down quite a bit. Uh, we'll do like 0.3. Aggressiveness doesn't really matter too much to me. Max speed, I'm not too worried about that either. But if you don't want a really loud burble, obviously you would go to soft, or if you want like an OEM sound, you can do OEM. They got a few different options in here, medium or hard. Um, we're gonna hit cold start reduction. Exhaust flap always open in sport mode. I actually already have that set up. Startup roar, sure, why not? Um, high pressure fuel pump installed, we already have that. So sport cooling mode for intercooler. I'm actually gonna turn that off. So as you guys remember in uh, boot mode, I had the additional cooling setting on and some of you think that maybe that was why the oil was reading so low or so cool. We'll see. I'm going to keep it off for now and see what happens, see if it takes longer for the car to warm up. But that should be pretty much everything I need in here um, to run this. We're going to hit back 
and then we're gonna do a long right. Since this is the first time flashing this car with MHD, me personally, at least who knows what the owner did before me, this is gonna be a long right. So go ahead and hit it. You see a bunch of errors pop up. This is normal, let it go through the process. So the first time you flash, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but in the future, once you've already flashed one map and you're switching maps, it's really, really fast. I think we timed it on the Supra and it was like eight or nine seconds. So crazy fast flashing times. While this is flashing, if you guys wanna go ahead and pick up any merch, I have added a ton of merch to the merch store and continue to add more. Working hard, I'm putting out as much as possible for you guys and I appreciate the support so much. In addition to that, we are gonna be doing dyno sessions with both Pro Tuning Freaks and MHD. However, when we do those sessions, they are gonna be with custom tunes. Um, as you guys know, I have a Dynamic Auto Works Turbo that I'm putting on. I have the Dorch Stage 2 High Pressure Fuel Pump. I have a Snow uh, Methanol Injection Kit we're putting in, and probably a few other things. So this car is going to be making considerably more power, and we will need a custom tune for that. I have the two custom tuners that I'm going to be working with on both Pro Tuning Freaks and MHD locked in. So we're going to have some good comparison data for you guys if you're looking to make a little more horsepower in your Gen 1 B58. All right, success. So we're going to wait it out 30 seconds. And then we are going to start up the car. And the total ride time for that was two minutes for the long right. So you guys could hear the startup roar there. RPMs lift up a little bit. No loud cracks or burbles, just a simple RPM lift. And then obviously the cold start is turned off. You'll also notice that my spoiler is not on the car. If you guys remember when I bought that spoiler, I was talking about what I was gonna do to it. Um, it is at paint right now with my GTS hood, and I'll be able to show you guys what that's gonna look like, hopefully by the end of the week or next week. All right, guys, so we are on the road. I officially let the car warm up, and you guys were correct. That advanced cooling mode was the reason that this car was staying so cold. We now are up in the 200s, probably 230, 220 and uh, that's after about a half an hour of driving. So that mode will actually keep your car very cool, but I also have heard that it will uh, put a lot of stress on other components. I personally didn't have any issues in the Supra running it, but it sounds like a couple of people in the comments did have some other issues with it causing more stress and wear on other components. Either way, we are officially on MHD, we are driving. It, the car sounds good, burbles are very minimal. Pretty much like I had it on boot mode, <laughs> for the most part, non-existent. But um, we got Draggy running here, we got all the cameras, we're gonna try and get a little run in. In Mexico, we can get far enough out. Car feels good, car feels really good. The power band is smooth, the, the driving is smooth. I've been in comfort mode mostly, I just switched over to sport, but it feels fine, I have no issues with it. I, I didn't have issues running MHD on my Supra either. I will say that, you know, when it comes to flashing on the two different maps, I find for whatever reason, uh, MHD to be a bit more consistent and easier and faster when it comes to actually flashing in the maps. For whatever reason, I continue to have a lot of connectivity issues um, with, with Pro Tuning Freaks with boot mode. I've never had any issues with MHD, and that's just me being flat out honest. It seems like the app is just a bit more stable when it comes to actually connecting and flashing in the map. But anytime that I use an ENET cable and a laptop with Pro Tuning Freaks, it works fine. So. Yeah, car feels good, man. Pulls really strong. Now when it comes to doing these runs, you guys, with Draggy, I'm not trying to get like the fastest run. I'm just trying to give you guys an example of one run versus the other run. And I wanted to do both of these tunes relatively close to one another in similar conditions. So um, we could really stack up the times versus one another. I'm also not doing like any insane launches or anything like that. Um, you know, once you start making a lot of power in these cars, you, you will want to consider upgrading your drive shafts and axles, and I do plan on doing that once we upgrade the turbo and add in all of those modifications. So this is right where I did the draggy run before. I'm going to try and pull one off here. Felt really good. Car feels super quick. Um, for whatever reason, it didn't seem like it read right though. My dragon's having some issues. 
try and get another one in here. But yeah, everything seems really good, feels really good. Power band is very smooth all the way through. Torque is there, horsepower is there. I would say butt dyno, they feel very similar, but it's hard to tell with those types of things, man. You know, like I thought that my custom map, whichever map was on this car when I bought it, I thought that was faster than the, the boot mode map, but the boot mode map was actually um, significantly faster. So boot mode ended up doing uh, an 11.8 and the um, map that I had on previously ended up doing a 12.4. So either way, I mean, the car is, is quick. I think 11s are pretty quick, you know? <laughs> Obviously nowadays, in, in today's standards, 11s is like, or you're not even in the game. You're not even in, in, you're not even competing in 11s. <laughs> yeah, there was no way that that reading was correct before. <laughs> Putting me at a, tw a 28 second quarter mile, which uh, <laughs> call me crazy, but I don't think that's correct. Yeah, so like I was saying, I'm definitely gonna be upgrading axles and drive shaft in this car. I just think it's necessary. Um, especially with the power that we're going to be making. It's like a no-brainer. I don't want to run into issues with breaking things. I'd rather just nip it in the butt right away. Those aren't necessarily the cheapest upgrades to make, but um, I do think that they are completely necessary with the amount of power that we're going to be making. can't seem to get a um, correct draggy run on it. It's hard to say uh, what's going on. I think that I'm having issues with like GPS on Draggy because it keeps recording this at 20, some 20 seconds out. There's just no way. There's no way the car is running a 20 second quarter mile. It's definitely a lot faster than that. So I wanted to be able to get you guys some, you know, some decent numbers here to compare, but I don't know. 30. Feels fast, what it's worth. <laughs> So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up some times online and see what other people are running because I'm not running any like crazy modifications on this car right now. It's pretty basic, charge pipe, intake, exhaust, downpipe, stage two, you know what I mean? Like very common, common setup. And I'm gonna see what other people were running on MHD and we'll kind of stack it up against to what I have um, as far as boot mode's concerned. I really wanted to get you guys some data from this car, but for whatever reason, I think I'm having some GPS issues with Draggy, and I, I gave it five runs. <laughs> I'd rather not do any more, but I gave it five runs. The car feels great. It feels awesome, but I just can't seem to um, get a, uh, a, a realistic number out of it. It keeps giving me like 20 something, 30 something, like just ridiculous quarter mile times that I know are obviously not accurate. And I'm pretty sure that has everything to do with GPS or something with the app on the phone, which I have noticed before, Draggy can be like really buggy sometimes. You guys heard me say it a couple of times already, the car feels really good, feels quick, feels fast, like the torque is there, it's smooth, power band feels nice, the horsepower feels good, but it's really tough to say like if the car is any faster, it feels just as fast if I'm being honest. So that is where the temps are sitting now that I turned off that advanced cooling mode. So any of you guys who are noticing that your car is running super, super cool, that's probably why. And someone pointed that out, good catch, in another video that uh, that was why the car was having such a hard time 
you know, getting warm. So I did look up some other times online and it looked like consistently people were running about the same times, like 11.6, 11.7, 11.8, like right around what we ran on boot mode, which is kind of what I figured. I didn't think it would be too much faster or too much slower. For whatever reason, my draggy was acting up, but um, that's sort of what you can expect. I think that they're gonna both be very similar as far as power as well. I think it just comes down to the usability and the interface and your custom tuner and all that stuff, whichever one you like more, but both of them are fantastic platforms, man. You can't really go wrong with either of them. I think both of them have come a really long way. And in a matter of months, they're all gonna have like the same amount of features as far as like flex fuel, anti-lag, map switching on the fly. I do know that right now, MHD does not offer anti-lag, flex fuel, or map switching on the fly for the Gen 1 B58s. From what I understand, they have it for the S55, they have it for the N13, and then they have it for the N55s. But we are still waiting on it for the uh, Generation 1 B58s. Obviously, Pro Tuning Freaks does have the rolling anti-lag already out. I made a video on that. And I know that they're like right on the cusp of releasing the flex fuel setup. Brian just did a video on that. Like I said before, we are gonna be custom tuning. I'm gonna be custom tuning with two different tuners on both platforms to kind of give you guys comparison data. And I'm also gonna show you guys when we go to the dyno um, um, some numbers that John has on the graph from other 340s on OTS maps and kind of see relatively like what the gains are when we do what we do to the car versus like stock and OTS and all of that stuff. He has all the data, so it wasn't super important to me to dyno this car stock. And also I didn't get this car in stock form. It didn't have a stock downpipe on it. It didn't have a stock exhaust on it. It didn't have a stock tune on it. So I knew right away, I was like, okay, we're just gonna start making content. Um, when we start tuning the car and get some numbers and data from that. I had a little run-in the other day on the freeway. Cracked the underside of my lip, not too bad. But there was something in the freeway that I hit. <laughs> But hey, as we know, carbon fiber, low cars, that's just part of it, right? I will say that, you know, from my experience and everyone has their own experience when dealing with these apps and tuning these cars, I've had a much easier time flashing in and getting connectivity with MHD versus Pro Tuning Freaks boot mode for whatever reason. And that could very well be, you know, my adapter or like the service, but I did use both of these platforms, both of these apps and both of the same adapters in the exact same location. And every time I flash with MHD, it's really easy and really quick. Pro Tuning Freaks boot mode seems to take a little bit longer and sometimes just flat out doesn't work. So really who knows why, anytime that I use an E-Net cable with Pro Tuning Freaks, it, it works fine. But if I'm using adapters, it just seems to be like hit or miss for me. I also do like the fact that physical files are given to you when you do custom tunes. So you have an actual physical file. I prefer that over having your tune file in a cloud somewhere. That's just me personally, but everyone has their own way of operating when it comes to this stuff. As far as cost goes, boot mode is $595. And as far as MHD goes, it is on sale at $442. So I really do think that these are both very similar platforms platforms and I think what it really comes down to is who are you going to tune with? Who is your custom tune going to be with and what platform do they desire to tune off of? OTS maps on these cars are only going to take you so far, but the majority of people are really just going to be running OTS maps. Not everyone out here wants to put on big turbos, flex fuel kits, methanol, all that kind of stuff. Some people just want to flash in a tune and have a little bit of fun and a little more power. And I think that you're going to be able to accomplish that with both of these setups. I really don't think there's one that's better than the other. But ultimately, you know, the decision is up to you guys. I really don't see any like clear reason to say that one app or one tuning platform is significantly better than the other one. So hopefully this gives you guys an idea of how MHD works and kind of what it's about and comparatively to boot mode, what you can expect. I just end up using the one that's easier to use and more accessible. For me right now, that is MHD. I find that tuning with it, flashing with it, and just on the fly is, is so much easier. And when it comes to stuff like that, you know, when I'm flashing in this car as much as I am, that's kind of like a big deal. So next week when we install the dyno, the meth kit, the high pressure fuel pump, all of that stuff, we are gonna be first tuning with a tuner off of Pro Tuning Freaks boot mode. It's gonna be good content, I'm excited for it. Gonna be making a little bit more power, it should be a lot of fun. But yeah, you guys, I hope this video helped you out. Feel free to drop those comments down below. Which one do you prefer, MHD, boot mode? What team are you on? And tell us why. The comment section is really where people are gonna learn the most because I'm not the only person out here getting this data and having these experiences. And when you guys talk about stuff in the comments, I learn too. And that's really important to me. For someone who makes content and I'm trying to give you as much honest 
uh, feedback as possible. You guys play a big role in that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Peace.